so now we are going to move on to different types of grinding operations so when we talk about grinding operations basically we have got uh, four basic types number one is surface grinding number two is centerless grinding number three is cylindrical grinding and number of four is creep freed grinding so we are going to go through all of these four and see how what is the difference between all these four so number one is surface grinding surface grinding is used to grind a plain flat surface so here we have got a plain surface this is my workpiece okay it is also uh, plain and it is uh, flat surface we have got a cylindrical workpiece this is also plain and flat on the top of the surface so we basically carry out plain and flat uh, surface grinding <clears throat> the spinning po spindle position is either horizontal or vertical so here we can see that the spindle is horizontal in this case whereas in this case we have vertical spindle a relative motion of the workpiece is achieved either by reciprocating or uh, rotating it so here you can see that we've got the workpiece which is rotating one is in the uh, anti-clockwise uh, clockwise direction and the other one is in the anti-clockwise direction whereas this workpiece which is uh, rectangular or what is uh, what you call a squarish in shape it moves back and forth and this back and forth movement is called reciprocating movement <clears throat> this reciprocating movement comes at a certain frequency so in the form of hertz how much it moves in one second is something uh, which is uh, determined by the frequency so uh, cylindric uh, sorry uh, surface grinding can be carried out by horizontal spindle machine so here is an example of our uh, grinding wheel which has a, a horizontal uh, spindle and then we have got our workpiece which is reciprocating as the table is going to move in the reciprocating direction this table has uh, two degree of freedom one in uh, in the uh, what do you call uh, y axis and one in the x axis this is the z axis and z axis is where the grinding wheel moves so this is one of the most common uh, surface grinding machine available next we move on to cylindrical grinding now in cylindrical grinding <coughs> we have got two types number one is external cylindrical grinding and number two is internal cylindrical grinding so whenever you are basically uh, grinding the external surface of a workpiece then this is called external cylindrical grinding provided that the workpiece is cylindrical so you can see that in both cases the workpiece is cylindrical in shape and in internal cylindrical grinding you are basically grinding the internal surface of the workpiece so that is why it is called internal cylindrical grinding so the grinding wheel is fed uh, in this direction so that it can reduce the dimensions uh, in the form of either length so the length can be reduced as well as the diameter also can be reduced so, so this is something similar to uh, what you call turning machine however the material removal rate is considerably far less and far uh, it has reduced quite a bit so if we look at uh, cylindrical grinding then we move on to centerless grinding so what is centerless grinding centerless grinding is basically an alternate for grinding external and internal surface uh, it's it, it helps in the reduction of the handling time and centerless grinding is used for high production work so what happens is that you've got a rest blade okay on this rest blade you've got your workpiece Okay. on this workpiece you put the grinding wheel and then you put a regulating wheel so the function of regulating wheel is to prevent the workpiece from uh, deviating uh, or changing its course so the workpiece we want the workpiece to be actually uh, completely in line with our uh, grinding wheel so the regulating wheel basically helps the workpiece to stay in one place so that the grinding wheel which is coming from the other direction it can easily 
and grind the workpiece. Now the workpiece is resting on a rest blade. So there are uh, different uh, types. One number one is external centerless grinding. In external centerless grinding, the workpiece or the work is supported by the rest plate and the workpiece is ground between two wheels so we've got wheel number one which is the grinding wheel and we've got wheel number two which is the regulating wheel <coughs> so in order to prevent any angular uh, deviations okay or any uh, misfits or misalignments we use regulating wheel next we take a look at internal centerless grinding in internal centerless grinding obviously what we can see is that the grinding wheel is internally placed okay the center of the workpiece and the center of the uh, grinding wheel do not match or coincide now in order to keep the workpiece in order to hold the workpiece we have got one regulating wheel and two supporting rollers so that they can keep the workpiece in place and the grinding wheel then it moves around uh, it it basically uh, rotates and grinds the internal surface of the material so instead of a rest blade so there is no rest blade here which was previously mentioned uh, two support rolls are added so we've got one and we've got number two support roll we've got number three is the regulating wheel and number four is our grinding wheel <coughs> Next, we move on to grinding creep fatigue grinding. So, creep, uh, sorry, creep feed grinding. Creep feed grinding is performed at a very high depth of cut. So, here you can see that the depth of cut, okay, or we, I want to remove the more amount of material from my workpiece. So, that is why I use creep feed grinding. Slowly, slowly, I will increase the depth and then slowly, slowly, I will move. I cannot go very fast but I can slowly slowly uh, go deep and remove the material. This creep feed grinding is used to make slots okay. It is used to make grooves inside a body something like that. So the applications are making cavities and grooves. Now the depth of cut are 1000 to 10,000 times greater than conventional surface grinding. So there are other abrasive grinding processes available such as a honing process in honing process we have got uh, a set of abrasive sticks stick number one stick number two stick number three and then these sticks uh, are rotated by a driver okay and this uh, driver basically bolts a shaft using a universal joint now these uh, four bonded stick abrasive sticks then they revolve so i have got my cylinder and these four sticks go inside and they start revolving and they basically and do the grinding of the internal surface of a cylinder and that is why it is used in our combustion engines in our car engines in the car engines the internal combustion engine we got two three cylinder four cylinder so those four cylinders are basically grounded they are their surface finish is very fine so that the piston ring can move up and down so that fine surface finish in the cylinder wheel can be carried out by the honing process other applications include bearings hydraulic cylinders and gun barrels <clears throat> so here is a video of uh, honing process that you guys can observe So when we talk about a uh, lapping process, then lapping is basically a process by which we can uh, basically physically control or we can use machines as well. And uh, the grits or the abrasive grains are loose. They are not bonded together. So I have got a surface and then I have a lapping compound. In lapping compound, there is a liquid. And in that liquid, I have got the uh, 
abrasive grains. I will pour the liquid on the surface and then using a lapping tool I will slowly 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 uh, grind and slowly slowly create a very fine and smooth surface finish. So this process of carefully doing the lapping process or grinding with the help of uh, loose grains is used to, pro uh, to make uh, products with very good surface accuracy and very good smoothness. A lapping is used in the production of optical lens, metallic surface bearings and gauges. Lapping uses a fluid suspension so I have got a beaker in this I have got a fluid and then I will put some abrasive particles which are suspended. So this is called a fluid suspension of a very very small abrasive particles called lapping compound. So lapping compound. So this is lapping compound and this acts as a abrasive tool. So here is a video of lapping process that you guys can uh, visualize. Lapping. Lapping is a finishing process following after grinding and designed to produce an exceptionally high degree of surface finish as well as a perfectly true surface accurate to size with an extremely close limits. In some work, the finish is more important than the dimensional accuracy. Lapping is a machining operation in which two surfaces are rubbed together with an abrasive between them by hand movement or by way of a machine. Now let's discuss the process of the single plate lapping machine. The first feature noticed in the single plate lapping machine is the rotating working plate which carries the three conditioning rings. These conditioning rings are guided by roller forks in most cases and rotate to the plate. Here we can see that conditional rings contains a flat plate with suitable holes. The holes retains the job on the lapping plates. Now we will gently place the job on in the holes of the retaining plate. After that we will place a second lap on the job as we can see in the video. Now a heavy weight disc which works as lap positioning and pressure control unit is applied. We will now set machine to run at slow speed of 150 to 200 rotations per minute for 1 inch diameter. The condition rings rotate in the opposite direction of the lapping plate. A slurry containing abrasive grain drops on the plates for better work finishing. The rotation of the disc causes the slurry to flow relative to the part surface, resulting in a very fine surface finish. This process gives dimensional tolerances of greater than equal to 0.5 micrometer and surface finish of up to 0.1 micrometer. Next, we are going to move to the last uh, type which is super finishing. Super finishing is something which is similar to honing process. In super finishing, you've got a stick, a bonded abrasive stick. Okay, that stick is basically uh, um, uh, is used basically onto the workpiece. So, this is my workpiece. Okay, and that stick moves at a very high frequency. So last time in honing I said that there is a frequency which is observed, uh, which is basically involved. So the frequency uh, by which the bonded abrasive will move to and fro, which is also called reciprocating uh, motion, is something that will produce very fine surface finish like this. Okay. So the difference between super finishing and honing is that the stroke, stroke is the distance it travels from this direction to this direction. This length of the stroke is very very small than the length of stroke of honing process. Okay. So the strokes are shortened, high frequency. So the movement, reciprocating movement is very very fast. Frequency is very high. Low amount of pressure is applied. So the amount of pressure applied 
onto the workpiece pressure is also very low uh, and then the workpiece speed is also very slow so it will not move very fast it will move slowly slowly and we use uh, the grinding uh, abrasive stick which has a grid size of uh, smaller grid sizes so this was all about super finishing so here is a uh, video that can be used to visualize the super finishing process Artifex EK800 MFP the elastic bonded precision tool for a perfect super finishing in external grinding we'll now show you how the polishing wheel is applied Artifex abrasive and polishing wheels are offered for all current and modern types of machines. But they also work on older machines, such as the one shown here. As you can see, we are starting with a matted workpiece made of structural steel ST52. We'll now do a super finishing by the use of the Artifex EK800 MFP polishing wheel. First, we fix the polishing wheel in the machine. Then we are dressing the wheel. Now it comes to super finishing. We insert the workpiece and polish it. To show a before and after effect, we only polish halfway. And we are done. A perfect surface with a constant clear and shiny mirror finish. With our elastic bonded tools, we can achieve a surface finishing of less than one micron a set. Artifex EK800 MFP for a perfect super finishing in external grinding. We develop and manufacture quality made in Germany. So after going through all the different types of grinding operations, this is the end of your grinding uh, machining operation and here ends the complete chapter of machining. Next we are going to move on to uh, rapid prototyping.